headlines for his prowess on the basketball court. These days, he's making headlines of a different kind in the field of diplomacy with North Korea. <laughs> Dennis Rodman burst onto the national scene 30 years ago as an NBA star. Known for his eclectic style and outlandish comments, the NBA champion stole headlines for donning a white wedding dress and marrying himself back in 1996 in an unofficial ceremony. Wish me well. Nearly a decade later, Rodman was a staple of reality TV, appearing on Celebrity Mole. The Earth has how many continents? 13? That's one of the dumbest answers I've ever seen. That same man is now making headlines on the international stage because of his unlikely relationship with the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, a huge basketball fan. Their friendship began in 2013 when Rodman visited North Korea as part of a basketball delegation. He's my friend for life. I don't care what you guys think about him. Rodman went on to visit North Korea several more times, on one occasion even singing Kim Jong-un, Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. The athlete, now appearing to be more like an aspiring diplomat, is one of the few people in the world who has a personal relationship with both Kim Jong-un and President Trump. Dennis, you know about wedding dresses. Don't I remember? Love your style, baby. Yes. Rodman and Mr. Trump got to know each other on Celebrity Apprentice. Dennis, you're fired. Absolutely. And Rodman threw his support behind candidate Trump in the 2016 election. Last week, as Mr. Trump took part in an historic meeting with Kim Jong-un, Rodman burst into tears in an interview with CNN's Chris Cuomo. Today is a great day for everybody. Singapore, Tokyo, China, everything. It's a great day. Please help me welcome Dennis Rodman. Did you bring a goodie bag over there? Yeah, yeah, I brought a goodie bag. Interesting. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. In a minute, right? So what? I I watched you in tears the night of the summit. Don't do that. <laughs> how are you that. feeling now? I get emotional. How are you feeling now? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to be back. You befriended Kim Jong Un in 2000. What? What was the first year? 13. 13. Okay. <clears throat> and so how did it? Did you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him? No, it was by accident. Um, <clears throat> I guess the. Um, I guess um, the marshal. I called him the marshal. The marshal. And uh, he was um, asked him about, you know, about basketball in America, and his favorite team was uh, Chicago, the Bulls. And um, he asked Michael Jordan. He, uh, he asked the, uh, the team for Michael Jordan, and Michael said, "No, I passed that one." <laughs> so then he asked Scottie Pippen, "No, I passed that one." <laughs> he asked me. I said, "Okay, I go." I go. So as blind as I was, I think I'm just going for another, another gig, shaking hands, taking pictures and stuff like that. I didn't know anything about North Korea. Nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And so how did a friendship develop? <clears throat> it was amazing when I went to North Korea. It was more like people was trying to give me this, this, this picture about why are you going to North Korea? You know, what they do to people, how they are in the world. People don't like them. I really didn't pay no attention to it. I just went over there because, you know, I'm usually friendly with a lot of people around the world. <clears throat> but uh, once I went over there and saw the, saw the respect that they gave me, I'm like, whoa, I got red carpet. All the dignitaries are out there shaking my hand, smiling, having a good time. I'm like, whoa. So <clears throat> when I walked over there, when I got off the plane, and I walked in this room, it's like, you know, 80 people. And they're sitting around the wall. I'm on the wall like a big square, you know, like that right there. I'm sitting there in the middle of this whole like, congregation, right? And I'm thinking like I'm going to jail. Right. <laughs> so I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm going to jail, right? So what do I do? <laughs> you know, so, so I'm sick on the, you know, everybody's so serious and stuff like that. Like, and and the um, interpreter said, Dennis, you know what you know know who seat that is? I said, no. He said, that's the marshals. I'm like, I didn't know who the marshal was. He said, that's our supreme leader seat. I said, okay. He said, do you know what that means? He said, you, you're, we're happy you're here. 
I said, all right. And I'm still, like, so sublime about this, man. You know, I'm just I'm thinking, like, I'm just going to play a basketball game, take a picture with all the guys here, and then leave. But it got more and more, more intense after that. And so he comes in. The first time you yeah. talk, you have an interpreter yeah. helping the two got of th you? Got three. Three interpreters. Okay. Yeah. And you think he speaks some English, yes? He said hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He made he an said, effort. He said hi. That was about it. <laughs> so about it. So that, that was all in the face. And career. were you at all worried that, like, if you said something wrong or, you know, that it was curtains for you? Like I said, I was so, so blind about the whole situation about North Korea. I was just more like, okay, great. We're meeting this guy. And I thought this is a regular guy. But when he walked in, I mean, it was like Moses just split the red sea. Moses? I mean, I mean it's, 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 it seemed like that. because The way they responded to responded him. Responded to him. But you know they have to. Um, well, I didn't know that. I didn't know okay. anything about that. Yeah. I, was, I was sitting down. They were standing up clapping. <laughs> <laughs> they, they started up clapping, and they got the tears coming out of their eyes. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? So you didn't know. <laughs> so these people? At that point, you didn't know anything about this I, guy, I, the nothing, human rights abuses, no, any of no, that. Nothing. And, and maybe that would turn out to be a good thing in a way because Dennis forged this relationship with Kim Jong-un uh, that would wind up opening, well, some people's minds toward North Korea in a way that could provide, could prove instrumental. We're going to get to that piece of the puzzle uh, and his relationship with President Trump when we come back. And we're back with Dennis Rodman, one of the few people to have spent time both with President Trump and the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, whom he calls a friend for life. Dennis, so when you are with uh, the marshal, mm -hmm. what do you guys do together? We basically have fun. We have fun. People don't realize that. You like know. how? Well, basically, we go like to this like, private island. You know, we go, we go jet skiing. You, pay... You've gone jet skiing with Kim Jong-un? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We go jet skiing. We go jet skiing. We, we sing karaoke. Uh, we... <laughs> Seriously? Seriously, we do, man. It's, what it's, song did he sing? <laughs> he, he tried to sing. Um, he tried to sing James Brown. What did you sing? I tried to sing it with him. I said, "Hey, <laughs> get up, uh, get on up, get wow. up, uh, get on up, okay. get on the scene, get on up." Sure. Like I said, scene, yeah. right? As you do. <laughs> <laughs> so that actually happened. Uh, that actually happened. Oh, what else? So jet ski, karaoke? Uh, we were snowmobiling, we were skiing. Uh, so we did a lot of stuff together. Wow. It did, and does he, I know you You gave him a bottle of vodka. Uh, Is he yeah. a drinker? Is he a drinking man? Well, you know, we all kind of have some. We, we, were all, <laughs> <laughs> we, was drink, we was drinking then, you know, but I'm not, you know, we was drinking like, you know, doing a party, stuff like that, singing karaoke. But uh, no, he's not a drinker. He's can, a, can I just ask, what, what was he wearing when he was on the jet ski? <laughs> Shorts, a t-shirt. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, then I'm just, just going to sit yes, and be with that for a minute. Um, <laughs> so he is—is is he a funny man? Like, how does it? Because you spend time with him and with President Trump. How do the two men compare? Um, I, I think Trump loves power. Yep. He loves power. Trump is like you know, if you didn't know Trump as a person, you think he's. A <laughs> you know, oh, so well, we can bleep that. Yeah, no problem. You know, but I'm you, you, think, you think he's a. You know okay, what? that's twice. But you understand? Know but I'm just saying that. But you know, if you know Trump, Trump's cool as hell. I love Trump as a friend. I love Trump. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't know him, you think he just this wild, crazy, just whatever guy. But you know, I love Trump. Me and Trump get along real well because his attitude. Who, who He's very do, aggressive. Who do you like more? <laughs> See, you try to get these questions out of me, right? These well, answers, right? I'm so, curious. Well, I'll put it like this. You know, like I said, first, first and most, I think the fact that I live here. You know, I respect this more than anything in the world. It's very free. I think people that come to, to America is looking for freedom, looking for happiness and satisfaction. What better place to come to America? Mm -hmm. And guess what? We always have doors open for everyone in the world. That's the best thing about living here, really, seriously. And it makes us, it makes us so... Not so much at the moment down at the southern border, so but, yeah. but in it's, it's, general, that is right. our approach. So I, I like that. I like the fact that we have that, that, that attitude that we... We, we really care about people. Yep. And the fact of it is that, you know, Trump really did some really amazing effect that he's trying, he's trying to, um, trying to open this, this door. But can I ask you, because I was, I didn't know that much about your personal background. Um, <laughs> and then I read that your, your dad took off when you were three. Oh, yeah. You're not close with your mom. 
No. And forgive me for trying to therapize you, but do you think <laughs> that you have an attraction, you know, in terms of your friendships to strong men as a result of you not having this father figure in your life? Well, I think that the fact that I've built my life up to where I've been so um, independent, I'm very independent. I build that up so much where, I, you know, I, I don't really, I depend on Dennis Rodman first and because I never had that stable background, stable familyhood and stuff like that. So basically, it's been a long road for me to, to, to come to this point. And I, I look like, I, I look at the fact that Donald Trump is the same way because his father, that was a, that was a tycoon here, was real estate. He went through a lot of times, trials and tribulations, you know, bankruptcy and stuff like that, but he still built it up as, as a human being. And the same thing with me. I built my life from the ghetto to, you know, to this, to that, and now where I'm at today, I can't believe I'm doing this what I'm doing today. No, we can't believe it. <laughs> can I ask you, because you've been open about your, your own personal struggles. Right. You've been arrested a few times. Oh, yeah. How many exactly? Well, I've been arrested, mm, like, legally. <laughs> Is there any other way? <laughs> no, uh, I've been arrested by 70 times. 70? Wow. 70. Okay, so how does a man who gets arrested 70 times in his lifetime, who, um, you know, wore a, his own wedding dress and married to himself, who was the head of the, right. the lingerie right. league, right? right? How does that man become an international diplomat? <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, see. wait. So, you know what? So, okay. Even better. How about this? That's where we're going to pick it up after the break. Hello, today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.